In the previous tutorial, which consisted of three videos, we looked at how we could calculate a number of statistical variables. We looked in particular at how to calculate the mean and standard deviation for two sets of data. We also looked at how to calculate something called the product moment correlation coefficient, which is used to link or connect two sets of data. And we also looked at how we calculated a formula for the regression line which connects two sets of data. Now on the screen here, we have exactly the same set of data. And the scenario that we used was a production manager wanted to investigate how the number of staff he employed on a given day affected the overall production. And the reason we're going to use exactly the same data is so that we can make some direct comparisons between the hand calculation method, which we see in the bottom left hand corner in yellow, and the results that we obtain by using Excel, which we're going to populate in the table in blue. All of these values in the yellow table were obtained using our hand calculations. So you can always go back and watch those tutorials if you're unsure how you would calculate each of them. Now just before we use Excel to replicate that information, I just wanted to highlight one key point, and this is something that you may have observed from the equations and information sheet for this topic. So on the equations and information sheet, we have two sets of equations. One set of equations relates to population data, and the other set of equations directly below relates to sample data. Now the big difference here is population data is when we have a full set of data. And this is the case in the example we're going to be looking at here. If we're taking a sample of data, as we'll do in later tutorials, then we need to use the formulas that are positioned directly below. The reason why this is important is because the Excel functions mimic these equations here. So we need to be clear whether we have population data or we have sample data. So let's just revert back to our data. Now the reason why this is population data is because this is a full set of data. The production manager has conducted this study for a one week period and all of the data is here. If he had decided to collect data for say a month and then he had only looked at five days out of that month, then that would represent a sample. But here he's taken data from five days and all of that data is being used. So that's why we're going to use the population formulas rather than the sample formulas. And we'll re-emphasize this point when we look at some later examples. So our starting point here is to calculate the mean of our X data. And if you recall, that was our number of staff. And the mean of our Y data, which if you recall, was our production data. Now this is very straightforward in Excel. We can use the function average. So if we type in the cell here, equals, and in capital letters, we type, average. All of our staff data now can go between a set of brackets. So I'm going to open a bracket. I'm going to highlight our column of data, making sure that I've included all five pieces of data. I'm going to close the bracket and hit equals. And as you can see, that returns exactly the same value as we got when we did the hand calculation method, as you would expect. So let's repeat that for the mean of our production data or our y variables. So equals, average, open brackets, highlight the data in our column, close brackets, and hit enter, and we get exactly the same answer again, 201.2. All Excel's doing here is applying the formulas that we applied by hand in the previous tutorial. So next we come on to our variance, and once again, if we type equals, and we'll begin to type var for variance, V-A-R, what we notice is there's two options here. We have var.p and we have var.s. And this comes back to the point we mentioned before. Var.p is for population data. Var.s is for sample data. So in this case, we want var.p. And again, we need to put all of our data in between the brackets. And first of all, we're doing our x data, as denoted by the subscript there. And as you'd expect, we get the same answer as we did with the hand calculations. Let's do the same again for our Y data or our production data. So equals, we know the function now is var.p, open brackets, highlight the data, close brackets and equals. Now I'm sure that you're already beginning to see that this process is much quicker. 
that the previous tutorial was valuable because you're able to see how Excel derives these solutions. Next we have our standard deviations and when we're dealing with population data that's denoted by sigma. Now the quickest way to obtain our standard deviation is to square root our variance, so equals, and we have two options here. We can use the function sqrt for square root, or we can use to the power half. Hopefully you remember from when we looked at the rules of indices that square root and to the power half are the same thing. I'm going to use the square root function for now. I'm going to click on the cell with my variance in for x, close the brackets and hit equals. I'm going to repeat that for the standard deviation of my y variables or my production data. So equals sqrt, open brackets. And I'm going to click on the variance cell for my y data. Now once again we see that we're getting exactly the same answers as we did with our hand calculations. If anything this is a little bit better because we haven't got any rounding errors here. It's taking all of the raw values from the previous cells. So if you recall from the previous tutorial, the calculations required for the product moment correlation coefficient and the A and B values on the regression line was quite complicated. There was quite a lot of work involved there. But what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to produce a scatter graph and we're going to produce the scatter graph by highlighting our two columns of data. I'm going to click insert and just here above chart, the type of graph that I want is a scatter graph. That's going to plot my X data against my Y data. And you'll see the heading there, insert scatter X, Y or bubble chart. For now, I'm just going to include the dots on my scatter graph. And the reason I'm going to do that is because in a moment I'm going to add a trend line. So here we can add our scatter graph. It's good practice to include legends and titles. So as we've seen in previous tutorials, if we click on quick layout and the top left box there, then we have options to add our chart title and titles to our two axes. Going to remove this label here to increase the size of the graph. And I'm going to call my chart relationship between staff numbers and production. And along the bottom there, on my x-axis, I've got staff numbers. And on my y-axis, that's my production. Okay, so here's the huge benefit of using Excel for this type of activity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a trend line. So right-click, add trend line. And I want a linear trend line because this is most likely to be a linear relationship. But down on the bottom here, we see we've got a number of different options that we can click on. One option is set intercept. Another option is display equation on chart. And the third option is display R squared value on chart. Now recall that R is our product moment correlation coefficient. So we want to know what that value is. And we also want to display our equation. Now when we refer back to our chart, what we notice is we have these two legends here, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger. The first thing it tells us is that the formula of that regression line is y equals 2.2059. Now if you remember the format that we had for our regression line was b was the gradient, which would be this number here, and a was the intercept, which would be this number here. So let's translate that information across. We've got a B value of 2.2059. Noting that that's the same as we got with the hand calculations. And we've got an A value of 152.67. Again, we can see that that's exactly the same as what we got using the hand calculations. So the only box that's left to populate and to check is our product moment correlation coefficient. Now just note here 
that what the graph is displaying is r squared. So we need to square root that number in order to get r on its own. Now square root of 0 0.7702 we can do on our calculators and that comes out to be 0 0.8776 to four decimal places. And once again we can see that that's exactly the same value as we got with our hand calculations. So I hope you found this video useful as an alternative method for generating things such as your averages, your variance, your standard deviation. But in addition to that, I've shown how Excel can be used to determine the formula for our regression line and also our product moment correlation coefficient.